The views expressed in this podcast does not necessarily reflect the views of the Sacred Inclusion Network. This was recorded on July 8th before Joe James went viral for confronting a group of police officers. We plan on recording another podcast with him soon to discuss what his life has been like since going viral for standing up for his beliefs. All right, I'm here with my good friend Joe James for the Sacred Inclusion Network. And um, we're going to talk a bit, have a difficult conversation about what is going on in the Middle East right now. Because recently, about for the week, week, two, week, two weeks ago, we watched a movie called Where Olive Trees Weep. And it was filmed before the October 7th event, but it was talked about the struggles that um, the Palestinian people, specifically in the West Bank, um, have been dealing with for very long. And so first, I just want to ask you, Joe, um, you watched that movie. Thank you for joining us. We we screened it oh. for our community. Um, what what came up for you while you're watching that? What? Um, well, I guess the thing that sort of stuck out to me was um, not knowing about it for so long. That was like when I watched it, you kind of realized like, wow, this thing's been happening. And um like i was involved with a lot a lot of political stuff early on and i kind of realized that most of the people that i thought I supported they were all, all like a lot of people were aware of it things that i wasn't aware of and i feel like when people watch those things they kind of think like wait how do i not know about this that's just like going through the back of your head like how did i not you know I would hear certain things for like a long time out here, like, well, it's complicated, it's complex. And every time when you hear that, it kind of suggests like maybe you shouldn't look into it anymore. Like that's where you should kind of leave it at. Cause it's like, you know, it's complex. You know what I mean? That's not, it's not set up for you to, like nobody really wants you to dig into it. You know what I mean? Cause that's why yeah. I say it's complex. Like I also would say, you know, um, because once you say something's complex, your brain immediately says, "How can I solve something that's complex?" Like you, that, that's how you're interpreting it. Like you think, like, uh, you know, I'm sure greater minds are, you know, looking at this issue, and they like determine that you know it can't be solved. Or, um, but I think it's something that is. Um, Certain there's certain fundamental things about the, like that that you see in the in the um, film that uh, you kind of realize once you have like what you know is the truth like you know that people shouldn't be suffering you know there shouldn't be like um, uh, people like living in like a, a a system that is like apartheid you know what I mean that should be like your true north or something if you will and um yeah i mean that's really what stuck out was like how drastically different ever everyone's life in that area was and that just knowing that it shouldn't really be that way and it never had to be that way and then once you see what happened afterwards you know like the after because this was filmed before like you were saying before, before some of the shots i think what i saw was afterwards after like um October seven, and um, it was it's it's kind of weird. It's like this could have been prevented. Like this could have been stopped. And I mean, we could go into details of why like what really happened that day. But um, yeah, yeah, it was something that I don't know. I feel like um, they were persecuted before, but right now. I can definitely see why um, I feel like um, what's happening now over there was definitely something that to me, I guess it's maybe conspiracy, but allowed to happen. Like the whole, I feel like the attack was allowed to happen and like the government not like i feel like the government knew it was going to happen and they just wanted they wanted in what's ever going on there they want to like because they know it's like an apartheid type situation 
and they wanted to stop, all right? They wanted to get, they want to like get to where America is, where, you know, like maybe Native Americans are gone and people can say, well, you know, it was a hard situation, but you know, now most Native Americans have, you know, used to be millions of people here and now they're not here anymore. And so now we can say, and then future generations after that, I'll say, it wasn't me that did it, it was, you know, the past generations that did it. And they want to get to that point, mm. but they're not there. And so they will look at like America and say, hey, but you guys, you had 9-11, you had this, why can't we be like America? We, and we everybody, everybody that's American know, like we did some horrible stuff and it really shouldn't be repeated. But I always get the feeling when I'm, when I'm talking about there, it's like they kind of want to get past it. And the only way to get past it is to do like this ugly thing that's happening now, which is the like the genocide and also like ethnic cleansing. You know, right now some estimates people are saying it might be like 186,000 people that died. You know, one, you know, and I knew that, like I knew that before they came out with that a couple, like a week or two weeks or something ago. Like, well, I think when I first heard like that particular thing, but I knew that before then. I knew that that would happen when they said 40% of the population is like uh, 14 and under. Because like in oh. Philly, that's 18%. And then you double the population of children. Like they have, I'm not double, but they have like, um, well, well, the percentage of the population of children. And it makes no sense. Like it makes no sense that anybody would try to invade and think that a lot of people wouldn't die. And I, I know it's undercounted by a lot because um, it's just, it's too many kids. Like I've been a kid, I know the type of situations people can be in. And, you know, if you just remember how your mindset was when you was that age and how things happen that's out of your control that your parents can always look at. And when now you say like 40%, like it doesn't even make sense. Like 40% is under the age of four, is 14 and under. And like, if you looked at every, the population on like a bell curve of like, children, adults, you know, seniors, right? And it was like a bell curve. Like that would make sense, like a sort of certain percentage of the population to be like, you know, on this like, it's almost like a, a distribution. And like this have this big bubble, right? Like this baby two part, um, like type, it was like, who's caring for those kids, All right? Like. And then they have to walk along the strip. It's like, we already knew that all these people were going to die before on the onset. And they were like willing to pull pull the trigger on this, like pull the trigger on these this like invasion. And they already knew, like they already could predict how many, you know, I didn't, you don't need like a White House representative or anybody. You don't need an expert. Like you just, just look at, use common sense. And like, you need to look at the fact that they knew that the attack was going to happen a year in advance. They already had plans for a year in advance. And they already, they already, um, uh, Egypt had warned them a week in advance that the attack, like um, October 7th attack was going to happen. And then like, and these are not even, like, this is not even conspiracy theory. Like, they, there's, like, the blatant, like, just the truth. Like, this is what they are saying happened. This is what, like, Israel says happened. They knew a week in advance. Egypt told them a week in advance. And instead of, like, a normal situation where they would beef up security or they took more security away. They took it and they, they sent them to the West Bank. And... And now, you know, I knew about the Hannibal Directive back in, like, November. Mm. I knew that, you know, you can't blow up cars. What, like, what, what's, what, sorry to interrupt. What's the Hannibal Directive? You never heard of the Hannibal Directive? Uh, I've heard of it. But oh, just for some clarification. The Hannibal Directive, the Hannibal Directive 
is um, a directive where it's okay to kill civilians or anybody you think is going to be captured by the enemy as, uh, while you're also killing the enemy, which is... Inc including Israeli about. soldiers. It's the only way. It don't make any sense. Like, it don't make any sense that all these bodies are burned. Like, not, like, it would make sense if, you know, bodies had, you know, um, maybe blown apart or shot. That would make sense. But when you talk about you have, like, weeks where nobody, you have all these bodies that's unrecognizable. It's like, you only could do that with I'm not saying, I'm not saying that um, it was completely like you know Israelis firing, but if somebody told you that they a patch if they have an Apache helicopter on the scene, like just on, just imagine one Apache helicopter or, or one tank just firing, the type of damage those things do, like those things are like. They're the things you see in movies. Like they're the, like you can see the type of damage. Like if you look at it, it you know, you kind of wonder, it's like, wait. You can't, you know, because like the reason I'm ta talking about this is the whole point of it was like Israel, you know, they everybody kept saying over and over, Israel has the right to defend itself, right? And uh, there was a couple arguments against what they were doing, but even what people were saying, like it didn't even, it didn't make sense. Like even what, like the fact that they could have gone in and negotiated like a week after the whole thing happened and got, I guess the vast majority of the hostages back and they didn't want to negotiate to get the hostages back. And it's like, you have to look at it and say, what was the motives? Well, they, and for a long time, Netanyahu was already talking about, like, there's videos you can, like, listen to of them saying, like, they wanted to, you know, do this or talk about, like, and they didn't, they never had the political backing to do it. Like, nobody really had an appetite for this kind of death. Right? And so right after it happened, you say, they start saying, oh, 40 babies died. Right? 40 babies died. And it's like, okay, that's an amazing claim to make for it not to be true. And to have the president said it, say it multiple times. Right? And it turns out like none that never happened. Like that's such an amazing claim to get all the way to the White House, right? And people made all these different claims, and you have to look at it and say, well, why did they make the claim? Like the the attacks were already on its own horrific. You know, somebody dying is automatically horrific, right? So why? What's the purpose? You tell me. What's the purpose of saying forty babies died? Um, yeah, it's, I would say the purpose is to emotionally stimulate people to agree with a brutal attack. Um, yeah. Yeah. And from, and, and I would, and from what I remember reading when it first happened was those claims came from one person who was living, I guess, one settler who was living in the area who now, I could be wrong, but I feel like was known to have made up stories and lied. And it was specifically one person who said that, and it kind of just steamrolled. But um, but yeah, I, as far as I know, there wasn't any evidence or that, that right. never was, that never was, that claim was never backed. With right. Evidence. But think about it like this. At what point does, when you, somebody say, makes a claim, 40 babies, were murdered, right? And, you know, at what point does no one stop to verify what happened? You know what I mean? Like, no, there's no, 
and it got all the way to the president's from coming from the president's lips of the United States of America, where, I mean that that's not that's not a conspiracy at all. Like that's not me imagining that it was always a planned lie. Like they knew it was a lie from the very beginning, because it's one of the easiest things to verify. Right. You know what I mean? Like if forty babies or beheaded was what was the claim was, right? Right. That means they had 40, they, in order to have a beheaded baby, I hate to talk like that, but in order to have it, you have to have a baby. You know what I mean? You have to have this a person left over to make the claim that that's how the baby died, which is would be like the easiest verifiable thing. And they lied about it. And so all these red flags let me believe that um yeah, I mean it's definitely something more sinister going on here. Like as far as I kinda wonder, I hate to say it, I wonder if um they just I yeah, I don't know. You just kinda wonder. It's horrifying to think about, but yeah. Um I didn't I honestly I didn't think I was gonna talk about this part of it. Sorry about that. It's kinda went down on if no, I'm being you're... honest, that's what I. If I'm being honest, that's what I think. Like, uh, yeah, I know we're, you know, that's why I think that they knew about it, they let it happen, and they they wanted to do this because they wanted to get this behind them. They wanted to like, because it's always like you can't really, you know, they want to call themselves, you want know, to say like, oh, we're the only democracy in the world, right? Oh, in the Middle East. If you want to say all those things, or you want to not the only, I said the wrong, not the only, you know, in the Middle East. I'm just kidding. Right? They want to say, like, you know, um, you know, they have all these freedoms and this and that. And you can't really say that when you have a Gaza and a West Bank. You know what I mean? And you can't really, so you want to, you know, there's other people have other thoughts on, like, they want, like, resources too from the area. But I think. I, I do, I do think, um, you know, it's just way too much evidence to suggest that this was something that was allowed to happen. And then like, because it's not like a far-fetched statement. It's not like, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a conspiracy theory person. Like, I'm always like a person who just, I just look at things like the way they are. I just look at what happened, what were the effects, does any of it make sense? Like, I mean, yeah, like I'm not like a conspiracy. I, I'm not like usually, I mean, I will think things, but I'm not going to like, you know, like if somebody said, Joe, bet your life on what do you think really happened? If I had to bet my life on it, I would say they just let it happen. And it wasn't like a breakdown and, you know, information or anything, you know, it was like they wanted you know, you have a unpopular Benjamin Netanyahu who was about to be done away with anyway. They pull the troops back. Like, and that's not pulling the troops back. Have you ever read the Bible? Like, um, David, the story of David and, um, oh shoot, what's his name? Uh, huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But they pulled the truth back and they let the one person who was innocent, you know what I mean? The one who didn't do anything. And I guess the one person that would be the actual, you know, Israelis, like they don't realize they're being pushed. They're being like used as, you know, pawns too, because right now they're going to war all around them and they have their kids there and they might feel safe right now, but I think the people in power know that they're putting them at, not safe, but I'm saying they might feel, I mean, you have to, it's no, why would you ever try to go to war with that many, you know, um, like kind of surrounded, right? In a way, it's like, it doesn't make any sense to me. And like, once they realize like, oh wait, um, the government's not trying to actually get any of the citizens back. They're not trying to get any hostages back because they could have had them back a long time ago and it's not the best way 
the best way to get it back was to negotiate. And there's all these protests in the street. And you have to realize, like, wait, they don't even have our best interest in heart. You know what I mean? They don't even have, like, because they could have got them back. They could have got them, they could have got the vast majority of them back. And now it's like, I wonder who's still even alive. You know? I think that's a very important point and a big message is I would say, you know, whether it comes when it comes to the American government, the French government, the majority of the governments that right. you look at their actions and right. it's very clear to me that the people who are making decisions don't have the best interests of their people in right. mind when they're making these inter- making these decisions. And, um, you know, it seems clear that they are being directed by uh, people who we probably don't know above them that are helping them receive copious amounts of wealth and are controlled. And so, yeah, I would, I would agree that that point is that the Israeli government doesn't have the interests of their people when they're making these decisions. Right. Because if, they did have the best interests of their people, they wouldn't be putting their people in such danger. Right. Um, you know, going doing what they're doing in Gaza in the West Bank is actually causing the potential and probably the high potential of a lot more violence to be right. brought upon the Israeli people. And there's instability, the you know, the economy is tanking because um, Yemeni soldiers or the Yemeni military is pretty much blocking off the um, I forget what it's called, not the Strait of Hormuz, um, the Red Sea Strait. I forget the specific strait, but the I- economic impact to what is happening is Israeli is massive. The the stress, the fear. There's so many different horrible situations that um that are happening because of these actions. So yeah, if, if I'm I'm looking at it from a, you know if I'm an Israeli citizen, I'm saying, how the hell is killing all of these people, uh, which is really creating more Hamas members. The more people they right. kill, the more people are going to want to fight back. How are right. you ben- How are you benefiting your people with these actions? And to me, it's it seems clear that they are not. They are, the they, they are have their own selfish motives, whatever the case may be, I would say power and wealth. And they're probably beholden to higher forces who they're actually just puppets and they're just doing what they're told at the end of the day is what I believe. But yeah, I think that's a really good point that it's hard to justify that just bombing a whole city full of people who are besieged and can't leave it's hard to say that, oh, how does that benefit the Israeli people? I can't right. see the clear benefit. It seems like it's only causing negative consequences. And I believe that hopefully the Israeli people are seeing that more and more. And I hopefully the American people are seeing that more and more, that the, the choices and decisions, the American government, the choices they give us right. are, are it's, it's clearly not in our best interest. The system has clearly been hijacked to only serve a few, I would call psychopathic people. And right. at some point, when is enough going to be enough? And when are enough people going to be like, hey, wait, I'm not going to support this anymore. I can't I can't vote for this. I can't pay my taxes to something that is clearly going to something so evil. Um, I think that's a, that, you know, I just think that was a very valid point. That I, wanted to yeah, I mean, on. it's definitely been a mask off moment for a lot of people, like as far as even like U.S. politicians like that was claiming like they're so like progressive. And when you had like a clear, um, yeah, it was like you you have a clear look at like something like this objectively right and wrong. Like you can't, you can't do this type of, you know, genocide. And, um, you know, because like so many politicians, even Democrats, like not even, but like, you know, the ones who pretend like they're progressive, like they were scared to even talk about it. 
Like, can you imagine? Like, they're scared to even talk about. Like, and th that was for like months, for months, and um, they just fearful to even mention and bring it up. And then you had the few, they called them the squad, you know, you know, and um, even the squad, they when they talk about it, you know, um, uh, Bernie Sanders, he was saying, oh. He, he was saying up until I heard last time I heard it was um I think at um at Bowman's um you know uh his attempt to get reelected um you know he, he, he uh, Bernie Sanders said a speech where he's like yeah Israel has the right to defend itself but not like that and it's like really you're gonna say that after everything that we know like we know that they knew about the attack we know that they um you know, pull their troops back and you you just gonna you know how many people died and they have more information than we have. And like and I know something's off because you know if I could do the calculation and I'm I'm not like a um you know uh some type of mathematician or um you know I'm not you know it, I, I'm not like a genius with but it's just it just takes a very basic arithmetic to figure out that you know a lot of people will die like if you do this and they so the thing that the driving force was well they're not doing it the right way they could go about it a different way but they have the right to go in there was like no you don't have the right to kill you know blow off the limbs of all those kids like you don't have the right to like you know you don't have that you can't like potentially have allowed something to happen which you know obviously is up in the air but to me, it looks like they allowed it to happen. I'll just say it. They, it, you know, it looks like they allowed it to happen. It looks like they are purposefully damaging structures and buildings that would allow um, Palestinians to continue life after all this, which means they don't really, they're not, they have objectives that if you just look at it, it's like, those aren't the objectives of getting back hostages. Like blowing up a, uh, uh, all the hospitals and blowing up all the schools and, you know, all the things where people live and to create, to create a society or a community. That clearly shows the objective is to clear out Gaza. Like, or else if you had, you know, if I was doing construction on your place, right? and I just completely knocked it down. I wouldn't say like, oh yeah, I'm trying to renovate the place or I'm trying to, no, you destroyed it. Which means you don't want who's ever living there to live there. You want them out. You want, you you know, so the objectives and then like to turn around for all these so-called um, progressive politicians to not have a voice. Even I'll go as far as to say for all these um, uh, progressive um, uh, 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 celebrities, all these so-called woke celebrities that never had nothing to say. None of them. All like you could say, you know, who's your favorites? Like J. Cole. Not none of them, but um, there was a few. There was like two or three I can only think of who were like saying, but like J. Cole or Kendrick Lamar. You know, all these so-called you know with it type people. Uh, see if they say something about like one of the biggest, you know, things that was all over online. Not a peep, right? And so to me, that was like the biggest mask off moment. Like seeing, because I was seeing like I probably seen like I want to say I, I probably seen about like a, over a thousand like dead bodies online, like just on my social media, not even like looking for things like people just like constantly posting of just death and you're not supposed to see that much and uh, it got to the point where i didn't want to look at i wanted to just like cut everything off and i kind of felt like guilty but mm. you know you just look at it and say no there's no way that all these other people aren't seeing the same thing like because i started seeing it the first week like of like it was sometime in november when it was first doing it's like did y'all see all the, like, it was a crazy amount of footage. It just looks like all online. You just like, you open your phone up and it's, everything is just there. And then it's like, 
it's just impossible to like put behind you and for a long time no celeb like not no celebrity but a lot of celebrities didn't even want to go online like they didn't even want to post anything they stopped if you look at Kendrick Lamar's like um not Kendrick Lamar uh J Cole he completely erased all of his uh all of his uh 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 history from like since the beginning and i think it was because a bunch of people were going on to all these celebrities pages and asking them to speak up this was before everybody really started knowing about it and they were asking all these celebrities like you could just you would just look and you see like just like maybe on on anybody's comments it'd be like 50 or 60 people saying yo you're not gonna talk up about this you're not gonna speak up and none of them wanted to say anything no, you know, and um, it just, it was a masked off moment for me. And I kind of mm. like, turned off. Why do you like, think that is? Why Why do you think that they were, they didn't want to say anything? Um, One, you might think, the first initial thing might be to say, like, um, well, I don't feel comfortable talking about it because I need to learn something more about what's happened, right? That would be like the initial and certain celebrities did, you know, say something. And uh, if I had to guess, um, I think a lot of, um, I think a lot of the people who, um, you know, pay them, told them not to talk. Right? Which means if they can't speak up about issues and somebody can pay them or tell all like a bunch of people who made their whole brand a bunch of politicians who made their whole brand about being righteous and being if they could all be if they all can be silent like that i think a lot of people woke up and said oh this person i should never look at i should never listen to for advice because they're clearly sellouts and they clearly are like they're bought and sold by somebody and it ain't, they don't speak for anybody. Like, you know what I mean? So like, um, yeah, I completely, I, I'm completely disillusioned by any, I, I was somebody who went to Bernie Sanders, um, um, campaigns to help, you know, um, canvas. And like, I, you know, at first I had gotten into some disputes with some people. I think they kind of are starting to get it. Now, like a lot of people who was with Bernie, like he don't have no type of, he lost a lot of his political following. Like um, all these AOC, all of them lost, um, you know, Matthew Bowman, everybody, they lost all of their, even th I'm saying the ones who were supposed to like, you know, um, pro-Palestinian people, they even lost their following. So people look and it's like, wait a minute, you can't tell me to go vote for Joe Biden after all this. You can't tell right. me. To, and they were still trying to push him. Like, oh, because they were like controlled opposition. Because you watch all these people suffering. Everybody watched them for, you know, months and months, people suffering. And you're like, you're trying to run this game or this controlled opposition where you're saying, hey, I think all this stuff, you know, what's happening over there is bad, but you know, we got to work out, watch out for the other guy because, you know, Trump is worse. And it's like, bro, y'all killing, like, y'all committing a genocide. Like, there's no, like, you can't be like, oh, yeah, but don't you want health care? Or you're committing a genocide, but don't you want... It's like, yo, you're committing a genocide. There's no but after that. There's no, you know, you know, we have to save democracy. It's like, what democracy? Like, what, like... Uh, honestly, America really shouldn't, like, if America was just gone, like, I wonder how many people would be free. Like, I'm in the Congo, you know, all these different, in, in a lot of those things we don't really look at, but, like, there's no, there's no fucking, such, there's no such thing as a fucking consumer economy. You know what I mean? Uh, we I don't, told, what do you mean by that? Like, when I went to school, we were like, big 
that I first heard, like that's when I first heard the term consumer economy, like where um, the economy is primarily driven by consumption. Like you're not really creating anything, you know, they're just consumers. Like, wait, that doesn't make any sense. Right. Of course, you offer like services, right? Or, but you're not, your exports aren't, you don't really have high exports. You're not exporting things out to the world. It's like, well, how are you driving your, you know, your uh, economic growth? growth? You know yeah. what I mean? How are you sustaining all this shit? And it's like the only answer is that you're getting all these resources and true labor from other countries. And you're getting it at a discount because you're, and you couldn't say a discount, but that discount is we're stealing it. You know what I mean? We got this off the truck. This isn't, you know what I mean? Like you don't get cobalt. You don't get like, you know, all these things for like, you know, cheap for nothing. It's like, no, you got this. Like you, none of this is sustainable. You can't go to a store and have everything made of plastic. And then, uh, and then think like that's sustainable. None of it's sustainable because it's not. It, you're just taken from another, taken from all these other countries. So they're not making goods or anything that have like real value to our actually build. They're just consuming, consuming, consuming. And the politicians, they're making money off of it. They're making money off the wars, um, and all these special interest groups that pay them. And, um, you know, uh, even now, like, you know, politicians are getting paid off by APEC, you know, to then everybody knows it's an open secret, you know? All right. We just had John Fetterman just flipped. John Fetterman, like, he was um, supposed to be some progressive candidate, mask off, right? Everybody realized, and he started talking about Israel, and he was like, well, you know, you have a right to, and he was running with all these progressive candidates. They had him being endorsing everybody. And then as soon as this happened, it was like a mask off moment. It's like, oh, how'd you get how'd you get it? Like who funded you? Who was, you know, it's like, oh, that, that person's actually, you know, they're for something different. They don't have nothing, they don't have nothing to do with their constituents. You know what I mean? I do know what you mean. Right? Mm -hmm. And so it's like. And like it really should be it really should be people boycotting America. Mm. America need to be like completely like it really don't even need to be a thing at all. Like we don't it shouldn't be a thing. Like we shouldn't be I don't even want to prolong this stuff anymore. Like because when you start realizing it's like we kind of are like the generally, I think we're the reason why a lot of countries are suffering like crazy. Why people are coming here is because we're making everything over there, everybody over on all the other places suffer. We're like this destabilizing economic hitmen type of stuff. And it's like, you know, we're like the new Rome, so and we gotta fall, like in order for there to be any kind of real civilized civilization. Wow. Yeah, that's that's deep. And, you know, I mostly agree with you. It's for me, it's so interesting how, like you said, there's been this mask off moment or I feel like America, if there's one thing that the country of America was really good at was propaganda of creating right. an, an image and an illusion that was not the truth. And right. that was the basis for a lot of the things that America has accomplished. And, you know, 10 years ago, uh, as I, you know, learned about the history of, you know, how the colonialist treated and pretty much conquered and killed the indigenous people, and then how they treated the slaves, and then how there was they treated the Mexicans. And, just every single story um, up to up to Vietnam, up to the war in Iraq, up until how they supported Syria. And there's always a story of 
what the American government says. Exactly. And then there's always deeper stories of what the actual people who've become killed or eradicated, what they say. And it never really lined up. Is there's a, like in the in the stories of from the the colonialists were these great people who founded the country. Um, there, you know, there were some values stated, but at the same time, it it seemed as if the actions never really lined up with the stated values. Um, you know, for instance, saying like, every man, you know, in the Constitution or every man is created equal. And meanwhile, owning a bunch of slaves, that is very hypo hypocritical. And you can look throughout the whole history of just lies and hypocrisy and illusion. And, you know, for me, 10 years ago, learning all of these stories and, you know, learning about the story of how Libya, how America destroyed a Libya pretty much from the story, like two Americans who were inside of Libya while it happened and their right. story which is very different from the American government story. Right. And I was like, oh, wow. Most of what we've been taught and told about is a straight lie. It um, is. And so it's interesting now that it seems more and more people are now starting to realize that, oh, the basis of our entire society, the, the entire civilization is actually lies. And most of the comforts we have are off the backs of whether it's in the Congolese mines where there's these children slaves who work for like seven cents an hour, or it's the Chinese who are making all these technologies who have need nets around their building because so many of them are killing themselves because they hate their lives. It's just based off illusion and lies. And, right. you know, Americans and just the Western world in general um, have been very comfortable and got used to believing these lies. And then right. once the truth begins to start to seep through or people start telling them the truth, they become very comfortable lying to themselves of saying, oh, it's not like this or I don't have anything to do with this or, or, or just not wanting to look at the truth. But now the truth is starting to be in people's face, like clear, where it's getting very, very difficult to, to, to not look at or to be like, oh no, that's not the case. That oh yeah, the 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 American government has the people's best intentions and they're trying their best to help people. It's like to me that's utter bullshit, and right. it has been for two years. Um, so I, I I'm I feel like we're at a very interesting tipping point. Um, where do you where do you think what happens from here? Where do we like what where do we go next? I I think of it as like a tug of war, right? Where, you know, you're constantly pulling, like, you know, they have a, you know, Republican, Democrat, pretend tug of war. And then they got all these Supreme Court justices that are, um, that are, uh, you know, conservative. They want to kind of take away a lot of freedoms, different things like that. If I had to guess, and this is just like a, probably the most uneducated guess. I'm just going to throw caution to the wind. I would say the people who are progressive need to just let this thing go. Let the rope go. And Republicans, like, their whole, like, philosophy of, like, you know, you know, societies based off of just pure capitalism and all those things would naturally just fall. It can't work. That's why they go to, they know it can't work. And they know that you need a more um, socialist way of um, working together, like to make a, a something that's sustainable. And uh, honestly, at this point, the way you just kind of let the rope go. When you let the rope go, the other person, the, the other side just falls. It, it, it's not sustainable. Like you can't mm -hmm. lie down to ideas and the way they want to run things. And you have all these so called, and really they make it pretend like it's like a real tug of war between those things. But a lot of the so called left Democrats and things like that, those are the same people that's for wars that and have always been for wars. They've always been um, 
you know, uh, in the pocket of somebody else. And so we think we're really pulling, but the other people that are supposed to be on your side, they let go of the rope just enough to let the other one pull in that direction. But we need to show like we're not, we don't, we're not playing this game anymore. We can't play this game. We can't live in that world anymore. Like, um, because it's it's a complete fabrication. Like if you go to listen to the White House press briefings, there's so many lives, and it's the most interesting thing I've ever seen, where you're watching something and everybody in the room is aware that what they're being told and what they're saying is a lie. Right. It's not even clever enough to really fool anybody. Like nobody in the room is like, oh yeah, yeah, I'm just everybody's aware of it. The people watching it, they they listen to it and say, Oh, you're just not you're just gonna straight up lie to us. You're just gonna you're not even gonna pretend to tell. You know what I mean? And at some point you just gotta look and say, like, look, these people are not as powerful as they seem. The Democrats aren't as powerful, like all these people, they, they, the people have power. And we just have to collectively just kind of give up on these, like this whole, these parties who are promoting this war. Um, Like, you know, just think about like the Democratic Party, like those people who got all these progressives to come out and vote for a president who was always racist. We locked up more black people than or caused more. Like he helped draft the 1994 crime bill that locked in prison more black people since slavery. They got black people to come out and vote for this person. And he's openly yeah. said racist things. Like it's on he's the most, yeah. he was against busing. Like busing kids to like go to white schools, integrate. Like, and so you might argue and say, like, oh, well, I want it to be done a different way. I want it to be, but you made it like your central focus. Imagine being a politician and say, hey, you could focus on end the homelessness. You could focus on all these other things. And you said, I'm going to focus on making sure like black kids don't get bust to white schools. Like, this is the current president. Our current president fought for this. Like, you can watch drafts of his bills that he helped write and push. And then you have the most racist president in the world, like that I've seen in my lifetime. And they were being put told us, oh, you got to vote for this person. Like, if you want to be progressive, like it was the most smart decision. I was like, I can't believe they ever convinced so many people that there was ever any, there's nothing good in this place. There's no good in our, like these society that we're building. We have to, we have to, really stop it like i don't because i'm looking at it all these people dying in gaza and everybody else is protesting it most people don't want it to happen you know most people are against it and it doesn't matter what the average person is thinking i know, I know we run out of time because we got like six four minutes left yes sir um but yeah like after a while you have to stop i'm personally not voting for any of these people ever again in my life like anybody, any politician that is alive that never said nothing about it, I'm never going to vote for him ever again. Like I'm not, because you already, it's been a masked off moment. And at some point you have to look at it and say, wait, these were the people that was in power at this particular time. They're going to try to switch it out to like a new president in, a new face on the genocide and say like, oh, I, I wasn't a part of that. And I didn't agree with what they said. It's like, no, you said nothing. You did nothing. You're useless. This country is crazy. We're supporting another country that's crazy. You know what I mean? And I don't see why people are so, like, hell-bent on being, like, nationalist on any, like, I don't understand why you would ever believe your country. Like, believe your politicians in any country. Like, why would you ever believe or, like, you know what I mean? Or have, like, this national pride. It makes no sense to me. Like, when you know you can just literally just look and see. And I think people just need to, um, yeah, just let go of this. Um, and I know it's out here. No, I mean, I, for, again, for the most part, I'm right there with you. I think I want to make a distinction between the political structures and the people. Because, well, yeah. you know, 
Yeah, you know, I I I I proudly have uh, when I was living in the United States, I never voted because I never wanted to vote for someone who I didn't believe in, who I didn't think actually had me or my friends, my family and the people in my community and my country. I I don't think anyone has been presented that genuinely believes in that and that is actually fighting for that. And until someone runs who I actually trust and makes points and has a solid track record and backing that isn't to me clearly a puppet, I I, I can't vote for that. I can't support that. And right. like I said, I think that one thing is, you know, as I dove into the history of propaganda and how propaganda has been used in this country is people have been systematically lied to and manipulated and brainwashed in such an effective way that they're willing to lie to themselves to go against what they see with their eyes because they want to fit in or follow, keep up with the Jones, follow the tribe. And it's getting harder and harder to, to continue for these people to lie to themselves, specifically what's happening with, with President Biden right now is he's, for me, for four years, he clearly has not had the mental acuity to run a country. And there's a whole group of people telling me that this is the guy in charge. He's clearly not in charge. He's clearly a puppet who's being told. And now the, in the past two weeks, they're saying, oh my God, I can't believe it. I'm so shocked that this is who our president is. And I was like, no, how you've been lying for four years. He's been like this. He's cl He's been making mistakes. He doesn't make any sense. He falls. He, he clearly wasn't fit to be the president. I could see it with my own eyes. And you told me, yeah. no, you told me, no, he's sharp. He's great. He's good. No, he, no, he wasn't. No, he's not. For you to lie to me that clearly, I'm just interested in how people are going to move forward because it's like, the lie is so in your face. You can't, right, right. like, how, how do you hide from this lie? Look at what's happening. And, like, I got to go, but right. I, I appreciate this conversation. Um, you know, I'm interested. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going to put it up yet or not. I'll send it to Angelo and I'll kind of see. But either way, I feel, you know, hopefully this was good for you because I feel like a lot of us kind of need to just get some of this out. Just like, right. you know, debrief. have these conversations. Yeah, just get the grievances out and just, you know, yeah. because um so yeah so i appreciate you bro maybe we can do this again but i'll definitely be in touch about just like having another conversation about this the the network in general and um yeah i appreciate everything you bring into the group and just for this conversation you're passionate and you clearly care so um yeah thanks a lot bro all right i'll have a good one you know peace, you too. Peace. i had to put i don't know why i usually do the peace sign too i don't know why i was like oh. <laughs>